Hello, my name is Dmitry, and I'm happy to announce that we're going to build a real commercial project, an e-commerce website for a fashion brand that will go into production in the form of step-by-step -step tutorials using hottest JavaScript technologies like NXMon Repo, Next.js 13, Prisma, Nest.js, in a way how real pros do it, using agile-like approach, clean architecture, feature slice design, CI/CD, and so on. This all should dramatically improve our code quality and speed up the development process. In this video, we will get to know project we're going to build, we'll do high-level design review and discuss selected technologies. What you can see now is Okino fashion brand current website and it's already pretty good, but it was done through website constructor and it lacks some customization ability. It has some performance issues and some layout shifts that no one likes. So we can actually improve this. I mean, performance, customize it in a way how Okino uh, CEO wants to customize it. And we can do it by using hottest and contemporary JavaScript technologies. Let's start designing our system and pick right technologies for our use case. The core part of every system is data. And we're gonna store our data inside the database. We're gonna use AWS icons, but actually gonna deploy our services to digital ocean. So it's gonna be DO managed database. And which kind of database we want? We want database that performant and nearly every database performant. We want database that supports JSON, that easy to maintain, and that can be replicated to multiple availability zones. And I guess Postgres comes in mind, PGSQL. But if you think I should use other database, especially MongoDB, you can leave a comment down below and explaining why. But I do like PostgreSQL for that case. Also, we may store some images of our products. We need some file storage. And it's gonna be S2 bucket for AWS or spaces for digital ocean. We should somehow manage our data. And we will be able to do that using some web server. We need a machine for web server. It's gonna be easy to for AWS or a droplet with Node.js for, uh, for DigitalOcean. But which kind of Node.js application we want? There are multiple ways or how to build your backend services. You can use REST API, GraphQL, or gRPC. That comes in mind. No one hypes about REST API, so we're not gonna use it. I do like GraphQL, but also I think gRPC, it's a brilliant, brilliant solution. But at the moment, it looks like uncut gem. It's too early, for my opinion, to use it in production. That's why we're gonna use GraphQL. And actually in Node.js environment, we have only one real framework, that's Nest.js. Because it have lots of packages around it that help you development your services, but also it will provide you ability I mean, it will provide you dependent, dependency injection ability. That pretty nice thing, and it will help you unit test your code and structure your code in a nice and efficient way. Nest.js with GraphQL, GQL plus something that will help us to communicate with our database, that's Prisma. Here we not have many other 
choices for ORM at the moment is, I guess, Prisma most developed, most rich ORM that we have at the moment. Also, we need something that will actually render and uh, serve our website, the front-end part of our website. We need one more machine to be able to render our website on server side because we need good SEO for uh, e-commerce website. And it's gonna be Droplet with uh, Node.js application. And what we will use for server side render can you guess it? Next.js 13. And why? It also some kind of uncut gem. It's nearly better solution. Um, it's still, I guess it's still in beta or not. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's a pretty young technology, but I'm barely want to use it. <laughs> That's why we're gonna use it. And also Tailwind. CSS. I really like how styled components improves your development experience, but in this case, I guess uh, styled components not really works with Next.js 13 at the moment, and Tailwind, Tailwind way more performant solution. Also, one important part of every system is user of a system, and let's think of how our users gonna communicate with our system. What comes in mind? Our users should be able to get actual website. So those are gonna be public requests to our droplet. Also, they may want to upload data, like administrator want to, or seller want to upload some images or I don't know, static files. This is gonna be public request to our web server, but also we will be able to have private request to private IP address to our backend server from a frontend server. Those services actually gonna live inside the same network. That's pretty nice stuff to have everything inside the same network. So it's a really performant private request there. Also, we privately, hmm, I don't like this. Yeah, this one looks better. Private request for our database and also one more private request for our files. Like hopefully I'll be able to serve every file through Next.js image component, but we will see. So here we got the line that represents public and private applications. So our Next.js public for the world, our backend server semi-public and other stuff protected and public. So that pretty much it for this part. In the next part, we're gonna develop our backend servers and, can, and connect it to the database. So if you like it, hit the like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.